It's gone from being that offensive show where foul-mouthed kids shout the F-word to being one of the most prominent voices of American satire and also has foul-mouthed kids shouting the F-word. South Park ranks as being one of the most influential cartoons of all time. So, we wanted to discover how this crude little cartoon came into being. And we mean crude in every sense of the word. Well, not the oil. This is the true story behind South Park. It all started with a joint. No, not that kind. We're talking about a big old hunk of meat. Let me explain. Matt Stone and Trey Parker, the creators of South Park, both attended the University of Colorado way back in 1992. Stone was studying maths and film and was in the process of making his first feature film at the time. Parker, meanwhile, was studying music, or rather, he was supposed to be studying music. He ended up getting kicked out of the university for not going to class often enough. Anyway, this is how Matt Stone recalled meeting Parker in an interview with Rolling Stone magazine. I went over to Trey's apartment and there was this huge roast on the counter. So Trey starts cutting off big slices of roast and handing me pieces. And I thought, this is cool. Everyone else at college has little dishes of beans and rice or noodles. They immediately hit it off bounding over a love for the irreverent and quirky band Primus, as well as a love for the irreverent and quirky comedy group Monty Python. I think it would be fair to describe them as irreverent and quirky during their university days. All they ever wanted to do was make each other laugh. As Trey puts it, Matt and I were really the two people who didn't take anything that seriously. And we were always trying to make each other laugh. And we were always kind of doing voices for each other. We were those guys who were sort of annoying to some people because no one else was in on the joke. Their goofing around wasn't confined to the lecture halls and apartments. They would be making their own films for coursework and help out with the projects of other students. They'd operate cameras, run the sound, or provide funny voices. Like all good friendships, it appears that around 90% of their time was spent making funny voices. The difference with these two, though, is that those funny voices would be their one-way ticket to Hollywood. It was at the University of Colorado that Matt and Trey worked on their first proper project together. At the end of each semester, the film department would display some of the films that had been made by the students. So the pair decided that they would target the next screening just before Christmas. Their short film, which only lasted four minutes, was made using mainly paper, scissors, and glue. Stop motion animation shot on an old eight millimeter camera. It was a holiday special and featured a group of four potty mouth kids in Colorado. Does this ring any bells? The short film was called The Spirit of Christmas and it featured the boys battling with outside forces before inadvertently bringing to life a violent snowman called Frosty and then needing Jesus to help to save the day. All in four minutes. This was the first South Park in all but name. It had the swearing, the snowy backdrop, and Kenny died. South Park was born. A four-minute college film is a far cry from a series watched all around the world, though. And after The Spirit of Christmas, Stone and Parker moved on to other projects, namely Cannibal, the musical. This was another idea based on something made in class, and the trailer garnered enough attention to raise $125,000 to make the feature-length film. Few people outside of Colorado saw it at the time, but the DVD, released after South Park made them famous, got a cult following and featured Drunk Director's Commentary, a special feature which probably doesn't require any further explanation. At one of the screenings of Cannibal, the musical, they bumped into an executive from Fox, Brian Graydon. They showed him the spirit of Christmas, and he loved it. He wanted to send it as a Christmas card to his friends. He loved it so much that he paid them $2,000 to remake it and then made 100 copies to send around. It wasn't long before TV executives wanted to chat with Stone and Parker. 
They all loved the short, but most of them wondered how on earth that would translate to a TV show. They just couldn't imagine something so basic ever being broadcast by their network. Kids swearing is funny for four minutes, but a whole half hour? Who would watch that? It's thought, though, that Fox were really keen on commissioning a TV series with Stone and Parker. But there was one major stumbling block. They refused to air a show that featured a piece of excrement that could talk, which we all know now is Mr. Hankey. Matt and Trey stood firm and refused to remove the character, and so the talks broke down. This, surely wasn't the first time in television history that talks broke down over a disagreement involving a talking piece of shit. So, it was down to two final options, MTV or Comedy Central. Who would they go for? As Trey Parker remembers, we didn't want to take it to MTV and have it become a kid's show, which is, you know, all MTV really is anymore. Nickelodeon. You know, that really wasn't a hard decision, you know? They went to Comedy Central. The CEO of the channel at the time, Larry Divney, thought that the spirit of Christmas was the funniest thing he had ever seen in his life. His channel prided itself on not just pumping out the same old sitcoms again and again. They wanted to be fresh and different. And South Park had the potential to be different to anything that had ever been on TV before. So, that was that. They signed with Comedy Central, and everything went smoothly, right? Uh, of course not. Parker and Stone started work on the pilot, entitled, Cartman Gets an Anal Probe. Start as you mean to go on, Divney loved it. Not only was it funny, you know, it was so unique and groundbreaking, provocative, you know, all the things that are in our, quote, mission statement, you know, for the network, a unique point of view, intelligent and very, very funny. But this opinion wasn't unanimous throughout the network. Anything new or fresh can make people nervous. Advertisers need to be appeased. They had to be sure that it was going to be a hit, and so two words were used. Two words that sent shivers down the spines of creators. Focus groups. The pilot tested poorly, really poorly, especially with women. And the network had a decision to make. They called Parker and Stone in for a meeting and told them that they weren't going to pick up the show. But they wanted them to keep working on it. It wasn't a setback, but one Matt and Trey were used to. We had sort of been in Hollywood for three years doing pilots, doing things, and so we kind of said, well, here's another one that's just not going to work. But they stuck at it. They wrote the script for the episode Weight Gain 4000. There was more subtlety mixed into the script, as opposed to the pilot, comments on consumerism in the US, and the obsession with celebrity culture. It was satirical, as well as being shocking and pushing boundaries. It helped to bring the whole series together to emphasize that this was about more than just four kids swearing. But it did still have four kids swearing. Another thing that helped convince Comedy Central was that clips of the South Park shorts were doing rounds on the internet. One of the first ever viral videos. They were gaining more and more popularity. There was a real buzz about them. So, Comedy Central decided to take the plunge and commissioned six episodes of South Park. Because of the, shall we say, rudimentary animation, they were able to produce episodes much quicker than most other cartoons. Three weeks compared to eight or nine months. These days, they can produce an episode a week. On the 13th, August, 1997, Cartman Gets an Anal Probe was aired the first ever episode of South Park, and it attracted just under one million viewers. This was a lot for a cable show at the time. More episodes were commissioned, and the first season ended up having 13 episodes. The following year, they peaked with 6.2 million viewers, with an episode charmingly named, Cartman's Mom is Still a Dirty Slut. It was the highest rating ever for a non-sports show on basic cable. Advertisers, who were at first one of the main stumbling blocks to getting South Park on the air, were now desperate to get a slot during the show, paying as much as $80,000 for a 30-second commercial. The show was a hit, both for the creators and the network. Since then, South Park has reinvented itself countless times. 
The characters have developed, and the real world has blurred into the show. With countless portrayals of celebrities and famous figures from Mel Gibson to Jeff Bezos. Recently, Trey Parker and Matt Stone signed a deal up to 2027 that will see them make season 30 of South Park as well as 14 South Park movies. We hope you enjoyed this video. Leave your comments in the section below. If you have a question for us, leave it there and we'll do our best to answer every one. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more quality comedy content.